what do you expect this morning? To go through the motions? Or do you expect to be encouraged, blessed, built up, strengthened, encouraged? Look, look. Just be listening, be watching, be expecting. What, what, what have we done in the last 24 hours with this weather? How many times have you looked at the hourly forecast on your phone? How many times have you looked up expecting, well, I wonder when it's going to start. I wonder how much we're going to get. Here's the question I get. Do you think we'll have school? <laughs> what about school? What do you think we'll have money? How are the roads? Listen. We expect a lot out of the weather, man. Do you expect more out of Ron Hurst than you do God? <coughs> Be looking. Be listening. Thank you, Father. Well, I'm checked out right now because I don't see Grayson. Can someone account for Grayson? Okay, as long as, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Amen. All the ducks are here. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you sent your son Jesus so I could have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being here.
Will they find me? Cause I belong to you. I belong to you. And the enemy can't take what I have or change you. I am. I belong to you. No, the enemy can't. change you I am I belong to you and by your blood I've been adopted I've taken on your name and I need to be reminded that I belong to you stronger than the curse. Greater are you who's in me than he is in the world. The words that you have spoken are stronger than change you I am I belong to you and love the enemy can't take what I have or change you I am I belong to you no the enemy can't take what I have or change you I
Will you judge and love your sons and daughters? Giving us your spirit, Lord. We are your sons and daughters. Church, some of you that have kids or grandkids, and I would say you that have grandkids, but uh, the parents that raised me with my kids, they're gone. I don't know where they're at, but they're, they're not there. Um, see, that song says, puts the opposition in his place. Puts him, puts him in his place. See, what that song is doing is asserting your authority as a believer of God. And sometimes, I can only speak for my children and the people that I'm around that have kids because I see them do it too. And I, I love it when other kids act up and their parents have to discipline them, but uh, I don't like it when I have to do it. Um, some of you, Tommy Rother makes one of my favorites. Tommy and I parent at the same level, abruptly. <laughs> oh, that's for another day. But see, sometimes your, your kids, and I, I use this phrase in first service, I'm going to use it again. It's, it's straight out of the Hillbilly Handbook. They get too big for their britches. Right? You, un you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you have to, or I have to. We, we did this last night in our home, that I'm in charge. Okay? I make, the, I make the decisions. I make the decisions. And if I ask for your input, that's great. But if I don't, I don't need it. Right? I'll make the decisions. Myself and the lady standing at the sink, we make the calls. I couldn't remember my mother saying this like it just happened. And if she said it once, if she said it once, she said it a thousand times. If I say jump, you say yes. Now, you as a believer, you need to put the devil in his place. Listen, all the legions of hell and all of their military ranks, all the way to Lucifer himself, doesn't control the power that you have living in you. Yeah. And that's not my words, that's God's words. We just saying, greater is he, the spirit of God in you, than he that's in the world. And listen, he's on a leash and he's desperate. And you need to be aware of that. Because sometimes he gets too big for his britches. And you say, Satan, get away from me. See, because this church, listen to me now. I don't get a lot of things, but I get simple. And the Word of God says this. Is there an area of your home? We've been reading in Life Group over on Wednesday nights out of uh, James Dobson, reading about parenting. And it's so, it's so funny to hear the other people. Uh, 
It makes you feel good about yourself. Like, oh, that happens to you too, right? See, and that's one lie that the opposition whispers in your ear. You're the only one. That's a lie. The word of God says you haven't been tempted, but what's common to man. Think about that. It's just common. You see, sometimes you got to put him in his place. And you have to, you have no power over me. The word of God says this. Now listen, I was getting beat up one day. And for, for a season, I don't know how long it was. And I was standing on, we've got a concrete apron in front of our garage. And you guys know the sound. Some of you will know this. The wind has a certain sound through a pine tree. In the fall, especially, because they're, they're kind of, the, the needles are harder. It kind of has this kind of almost whispering sound. And to the south of our house, there's some big, tall pine trees. And I had been through a season of internal turmoil for no reason other than I let the opposition take from me what wasn't his. Peace. See, peace belongs to me, and it's bought by the blood of the Lamb. And he has no right to my property. So I, we had this, we got this basketball goal there, and I was just consumed with anxiety, with fear, and I was hanging. I was, it's it's a low goal, but I was hanging from it. I wasn't like I didn't like jump off the bed of my truck. I can't even think I could touch the rim now. But anyway, I was I was hanging on that, and I can remember the word says that if you need wisdom to ask for it, he'll give it without finding fault. So almost like an auctioneer, I was hanging off that goal. The Lord, I need wisdom, I need wisdom, I need wisdom. And I was just, I was, I don't even know why. And just as clear as I've ever heard the Spirit of God speak to me, and it was like the whispers in those pine trees. This is in October. I heard him say, not audibly, but in my heart, I'm not the voice of anxiety. I'm not the voice of anxiety. And then I remembered that the word says that the sound of his name, the enemy will flee. So I had me, me and, me and Satan got in a fist fight on my <laughs> concrete pad. And it was pretty violent because I was, I'm kind of fiery and I was mad. And in my spirit, some of you will know what this sounds like. If you've ever been in the woods in the dark and you hear a deer run off, I started saying that scripture and then in the name of Jesus, you flee. In the name of Jesus, you flee. And I heard that down through the woods. See, because the word of God doesn't return void. It works every time. So whatever voice you're listening to, you need to make sure you're listening to the voice of truth. The spirit of God is not the voice of downtrodden. It's not the voice of regret. It's not the voice of depression, of fear, of you're a failure, any of those things. If you hear a voice or you hear a thought and it, it's directly against God's word, it's not the Lord. But you need to be aware. You need to be listening. You need to be looking. You need to be paying attention. Paying attention. I've told you this before and I'll tell you the last thing. I can remember my brother. Did, everything my brother did growing up irritated my dad. The way he ate his food, the way he combed his hair. And I remember asking my brother, be like, are you trying to give dad a heart attack? Is that what you're trying to do? And I remember my dad saying, son, you need to get down on your knees at night and ask the Lord to give you some common sense. Now, let's, let's be common sense about it. He's going to attack you where you're weak, so be ready. That's right. yeah. Don't be surprised. Where you're weak, he's going to punch you. The sorest spot on your body, he's going to, oh, does it hurt right there? That's what he's going to do. So be aware. Yeah. Don't be scared. Be aware. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Ushers, you come, Lord. We thank you, God, Lord, that we can stand upon the rock of your word, Lord. And it doesn't, it, 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 it's a solid rock, Father God, that regardless of what the world throws at it, the winds, the waves, the snow, Lord, the ice, Lord, that the foundation of your word is not moved by circumstances. Whether it's ours or someone else's or the country as a whole, Father God, that we can stand upon the rock, Lord. Lord, and I feel like right now there's somebody out here that's, that, that's got a relationship that's maybe not, maybe not a spouse, but maybe just a friend or, a, or someone they're close to that it, it's just tough right now. 
And the Spirit of the Lord told you to love them. Just love them. Because the Word says that love never fails. I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to deal with that person. I don't know how to deal with this situation. I don't know how to do any of that. But I know how to love them. I just love them. And the Word says it won't fail. <laughs> Where else can you take that? Where else can you go with that? This will never fail. Show me the piece of paper. Show me the document. Well, it's right there in God's word. Love never fails. Pray that these dollars and cents will go to lift up your kingdom and glorify your name, Lord, and add names to your book of life, Lord, because when it's all said and done, that's what matters. That's what matters. Do I know you? Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, I 
Now my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love.